Moving on to the next grade one on the card. And it is the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. And Dan, we'll start with you. Uh, currently Manila Crooner, your 7-2 favourite. 4-1 Hillcrest, 5-1 Ginto. 13-2 Manila Cocooner, 6-1 Journey With Me, who we think is going for the Ballymore. Sean Shrews, 17-2, 9-1 Hollow Games. And 10-1 Bar, worst loser and your fancy, please. Uh, Hillcrest, Manila Crooner, either to win, was 6-4, now 9-4. Hillcrest has been very solid. I think he's just a very likeable horse, getting popularity. The one for me, though, I think Bally Griffin Cottage is overpriced at 18-1. to 1. I think we've only seen one exceptional staying novice hurdle this season. That's Blazing Cow. Mm. Obviously, he's going to miss the race. Irish Handicapper gave him a mark of 147. Compare that to Miller Crooner, 139. I think he's the standard setter. Bally Griffin Co Cottage finished six lengths behind him on his rules and hurdling debut at Cheltenham. Conceded experience, conceded fitness. Jumped the last upside, just tied on the run-in. Gillino Bello back in second, a solid 138 horse, ran very well in the Lanzarote. I think that, saw, that form is very rock solid. Fourth has boosted it again since. One at Lingfield, Cosley next time out. I think you watch that race, watch the final furlong. He just pulled clear almost quite effortlessly. Looked like he was going to make hard work of it and then just found something a bit extra. I think that was a very likeable performance. Only had two starts over hurdles, but this is a horse that won three points, points in three weeks. He's a seven-year-old, thorough stayer, proven on varying ground conditions. Form with one of the best, or I think the best, staying novice hurdler. I think he's a, a great each way bet. And a case very well made. 18 to 1, Bally Griffin Cottage. Excellent stuff. He's 18 to 1 at the moment, Jeff? Yep. 18 to 1. There you go. Dean, follow that. Yeah, look, he, he's on my list as the, those types that you look for when you want to step away from the top end of the market, right? Bally Griffin Cottage is definitely in there. Bardenstown lad in there. Um, I'd even throw Eric Bloodax into the mix if he runs it. He, was, he completely flopped at the Dublin Racing Festival, so that's a big comeback mission. But Hillcrest is the horse that's going to come forward from this and be a superstar, I think. Um, there's some nice horses in here, but Hillcrest looks like this kind of Gold Cup horse. It's still a bit of a shell. What he did the last day, just thought it, it made him look like a beast. I just wonder whether they might be right to maybe sidestep and not go down the road of running a potato race and, and putting the horse on the gun to his head. You know, they d maybe don't need to do that. There's a big, big future there. If they do decide to run, if Henry Daly decides that's where they're going to go, uh, I think he's the most likely winner. Um, if you're looking for one of those horses that wins this race, the one Dan made a case for there is definitely in the list. Um, I wouldn't put anyone off. But Hillcrest, I think, is the one to take forward. If he runs, I'll be with him. That's Hillcrest currently 4-1 to one with fans bet. Dermot, the Albert Bartlett, have you got a strong fancy? Uh, yeah, I really like Chantreuse. Um, again, he was one I mentioned a few weeks ago on the podcast, but the, he's... Again, that probably biases, you know, when you, <laughs> you probably bias my look at the race. But uh, I really liked what he did last time. I thought he, he still looked like a kind of a bit of a big Egypt. He didn't really know what he was doing. He tried to jump the kind of crossing when he was coming up to the, the, the last. Uh, the horse in second, Ivan, obviously isn't uh, top class, but still was involved in those races. I think had the, the race been any way further, he would have just kept going on and on and on. Henry Brown has used that race, obviously, with, you know, Indo was second in it. Monley had won it. Uh, I just loved what he did that day. Um, and... Before that, again, he was one of the few horses that won what Henry the horses weren't winning. Um, I just think that there's an awful lot of improvement in him. I really like the new course for him as well, turning in. I just think that the, his jumping is fantastic. That jump at the last, the last day was just superb, as it was the time before. If he produces a big jump like that, he can just get away from them. Uh, Manella Crooner, the favourite, I, I just think he's a terrible price, 7-2. I think he, he reminds me of Fakira from last year, that we're kind of basing everything now on how well he stayed on at the end, but Fakira was even too, too slow for that last year. Just makes mistakes at critical times. I know there's only two furlongs in the last, or there's only two fences, or hurdles, sorry, in the last seven furlongs, but I, I just, I, I'm not mad about his jumping at all. You can find yourself behind, even on that course, you can find yourself behind with a bridge too far to cap. Chantreuse does jump brilliantly. Um, and I just think the way Henry Brown's horse are coming back, he's only going to be improving. And I do, I really like him for this. Right. You're entitled to your opinion, even if it is wrong. <laughs> uh, Don, what do you like in the Albert Bartlett? Yeah, I think Manila Cooner is the right favourite. Thanks the yeah. Lord. Yeah. A bit of sense. <laughs> That's why you're here, Don. Who, who you bring thought? sense to the party. Uh, look, I, I, I do like Sean Truss. Um, he's going to have to improve again. Like uh, Manila Cooner won over three miles on his penultimate run, beaten Ivan, who ran closer to Sean Truss the last day. And just the more that race went on, the stronger Manella Crooner got. Then the last day in the Nathaniel Lacey race at Leopardstown, it just was Danny Mullins rode a, another picture-perfect race up from the front on Manella Crooner, just stacked them up and kicked. And just as the pace was increasing, 
Manella Kroner made a bad mistake at the second last flight. He did really well to stay on as well as he did. It was a race in which it was very difficult to come from behind, and he was in, be in behind, especially after that mistake, which accentuated the task that he was faced with, and he just stayed on really well to finish second. Um, he should come on from that, take too much points on his jumping, but I think in, in the Albert Barclay, it's more about, you know, it can be a funny race, and it can throw up strange results, but it's, it's about toughness and... Uh, stamina and gritty, and I think Manella Kroner has all of that. That's why Racing TV pay you the big bucks, Don. <laughs> the big bucks, yeah. <laughs> Mikey, are you a Manila Kroner fan like myself and Don? I was, yeah, coming into it. Yeah, I That's am. past tense there. No, I still am. I just, oh. yeah, I love these maiden hurdle run. He could even won that day. And Hillcrest is a smasher. You're just worried about the English farm. Chantreuse, like, that's a nice race. That Clonmel race always leads to a winner or two in Shelton, but Mr. Fred Rogers was still going with him when he sort of slipped up. Um, yeah, it's, I'm not going to jump ship now. I, I like what I saw in Leperstown and Manella Kroner, and I'm going to stick with him. So did I, Mikey. So did I. David Mullins, what do you like here? Hollow Games and Chantreuse. Um, Hollow Games reminds me a lot of Manella Indo uh, by the same sire. And I just think the... It's going to be a great ride, and it jumps well. Um, wouldn't yeah, be surprised if he switched to Martin Pipe. Just wouldn't be. Yeah, the Mark 143, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, wouldn't be, wouldn't be hugely surprised if, if, if Hollow Games switched to Martin Pipe, but Fair who knows. Um, yeah, but I think Hollow Games. And yeah, Sh Chantreuse, obviously, the race in Clarmel, I think it's a great race for this. Yeah. I think you have to have gone three mile on heavy ground and come through. You have to go through the pain barrier to be able to win this sort of race. Mm. I think they've been both very busy. And it's two of them right profile for me. His jump at the last as well looked like a horse that was yeah. loving the test. Yeah, yeah. Birdie went to bet Redux? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that jump at the last wasn't a tired horse. Like. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. was. Yeah. He's a thorough stare, Chance yeah. uh, For what it's worth, Manila Kroner is my strongest fancy of the entire week. I, I just love him. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to end up being the best of these. I could see a lot of these going on to run in Gold Cups in years to come. He won't. But this is the right race for him now. I think he's going to love the Albert Barclay. And that run, if you just go back and watch it against Journey With Me and Kilcrut, he split them, even though that was two and a half miles on the inside track, basically, the, as, it, as inside as you could go at Leprosan on the last day. I thought that was a hell of a run. And to me, he is the banker of the Chapman Festival. That's Manila Crooner in the Albert Bartlett.